Breaking Coronavirus News Today Italy's massive coronavirus quarantine provokes panic and prison riots. China turns to propaganda in the virus war. And the coronavirus continues to spread in the U.S. My name is Bill Madden, and this is the Coronavirus News Live. If you are new to this channel and you need to hear the news which YouTube has demonetized, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell. Then you won't miss a thing. Good afternoon. CNBC reports that Italy's massive coronavirus quarantine is provoking panic and prison riots in a story by Holly Elliott. In Italy, Prime Minister Giuseppe Conti signed a decree imposing restrictions on the movement of people in the region of Lombardy and 14 other Italian northern provinces. This measure affects more than 16 million people, banning them from moving in and out of the area. Advanced rumors that the quarantine would be implemented prompted panic among residents trying to get out before the restrictions came into effect. The Italian authorities are taking all necessary measures to close the entire northern region of Italy in an attempt to stop the COVID-19 virus. Italy's extended quarantine restricting the movement of people in its industrial northern heartland has provoked panic among residents and widened the country's north-south divide. The Prime Minister signed the decree on Sunday imposing restrictions in the epicenter of the outbreak in Italy. This is actually an extension of of the pre-existing lockdown of 11 towns, banning them from moving in and out of the area. The publication of a draft degree the previous day revealing the forthcoming wider quarantine measures prompted panic among residents trying to get out before the restrictions came into force at midnight. Media reports said bars and restaurants emptied out and thousands of people tried to leave the region in cars and trains, where there were, where there were reports of shoving and pushing by passengers. Violent protests have broken out inside 27 Italian prisons against coronavirus restrictions with many inmates asking for an amnesty because of the virus emergency. Some 20 inmates managed to break out of one prison during a riot this morning. Shopkeepers in the area were told to close their shops near the prison. Prison unrest broke out in Medina Sunday after inmates were informed that visits from relatives had been banned to prevent the spread of infection. In the South, relatives of detainees in prison in Naples clashed with police over the government ban. Italy now has 7,375 confirmed cases of the virus and 366 deaths. The outbreak has been concentrated in Italy's wealthy northern regions. This has highlighted Italy's north-south economic and cultural divide. The presidents of the southern regions, which have far few cases of the virus, have pleaded with their own inhabitants studying or working in the north not to bring the virus back down south, telling people not to return. Those regions have signed decrees ordering anyone who does arrive from the affected northern regions into self-imposed quarantine for 14 days. Those who ignore the order are committing a crime and could be prosecuted. In a story by Ken Moritsugu in the Miami Herald, it is revealed that China is turning to propaganda in the war against the virus. As the rest of the world grapples with a growing virus outbreak, 
China's ruling Communist Party is using a propaganda playbook to portray its leader as firmly in charge, leading an army of health workers in a people's war against the disease. The evening news on state TV regularly shows President Xi giving instructions on the outbreak or touring facilities. Coverage then segues into doctors and nurses on the front lines, drawing on a tradition of upholding model workers and the importance of sacrifice on behalf of the people and the party. The Communist Party seeks to avoid blame for any mishandling of the outbreak, notably a slow initial response that allowed the virus to take hold. It seeks credit for overcoming the crisis to shore up the power of its authority. The government claims to have proven effective at stopping the spread of the virus. But it's not just a matter of what's shown. It's also what is omitted. State media celebrated the construction of new medical facilities in a fortnight without reporting on the woes of people unable to find a hospital bed that necessitated the new hospitals. June Teufel Dreher, a China expert at the University of Miami, said the party may have lost credibility with public opinion. News stories have a PR agenda rather than seeking to inform the public. Social media is giving the digital savvy generation almost instant feedback on some state media reports, but critical comments are often removed by the country's internet censorship. The battle for truth-telling on the internet is another sign that people simply do not trust in their government. Though propaganda works on those who believe in the party and want to be comforted, the core of the approach is to stifle criticism and show the party as China's only real hope. China has barred citizen journalists from popular social media platforms after they reported on overcrowded hospitals. The leadership has been very eager to write the happy ending to this story before anyone really knows what the world is dealing with. BuzzFeed News Online reports that the, as the coronavirus spreads in the United States, with more than 270 known cases, the biggest question that's emerged is how many infections remain undetected in a testing crisis that has swept the nation. The CDC has come under fire for failing to catch the virus during its first crucial week in the United States. The agency distributed a diagnostic test to state labs that was faulty and established rigid, narrow criteria for who could be tested. With the tests since fixed and the criteria expended as of last week, the White House is now arguing that the crisis is under control. Vice President Mike Pence, who oversees the White House Coronavirus Task Force, said that enough tests for 75,000 patients have been distributed. But as coronavirus cases are confirmed by the hour across the country, most of all in Washington state, it is becoming clear to public health experts that there are many more that are just not getting detected. To find out how many coronavirus tests are being conducted, BuzzFeed News contacted the public health departments of all 50 states and Washington, D.C. The answers revealed stark discrepancies in each state's capacity for testing and how they are sharing that information. The hard-hit Washington state, for example, says it can now test nearly 900 people a day. But Wyoming has yet to get state testing off the ground. Few states have access to commercially produced tests, despite promises to the contrary from the FDA. BuzzFeed News confirmed that 2,187 people have been tested across the U.S., 
either at the state level or by the CDC. How far behind are some state health departments in getting their testing capabilities off of the ground? And even after more tests are distributed, will public health services be able to keep up with the demand? Test kits sent to state public health labs by the CDC each contain enough material to test 350 patients. And now for the state-by-state -state rundown, starting with Alabama, where Karen Landers of the Public Health Department of Alabama refused to disclose how many test kits the state has received. The state lab went live with testing this past Thursday night. Ms. Landers says that her lab has advised her that they have adequate supplies to do testing in the state lab. In Alaska, 14 people have been tested as of Friday. In Arizona, they have received about 300 tests from the CDC. The state has tested at least 51 people with at least one confirmed diagnosis as of Friday. At full capacity, the state lab of Arizona can do 450 tests in one day. In Arkansas, they have received one test kit from the CDC on February the 10th. Between samples submitted to the CDC and tests done in Arkansas Public Health Lab, at least six people have been tested, all negative as of Friday. Arkansas can run tests for four to five people per day, according to the spokesperson. In California, as of Thursday, they had the capacity to run tests for about 6,000 people, and they were expecting to increase that number to about 7,500 on Friday, with the arrival of four new test kits from the CDC. About 15 labs throughout the state can now conduct those tests. In Colorado, until this week, they have been sending samples to be tested by the CDC. As of Monday, that is today, Colorado says it is now running its own tests and can test up to 160 samples per day. As of Friday, there have been at least 124 total tests, 124, with one positive diagnosis. In Connecticut, as of Thursday, they had tested 18 people, 13 of whom were negative, and five still pending according to the Hartford Current. The state currently is capable of testing more than 500 patients daily. The governor, Ned Lamont, has asked the CDC for more tests. In Washington, D.C., as of Friday, they have tested at least nine people. According to NBC Washington, it was capable of testing about 25 cases a day this week and it was expected to increase its capacity to 80 tests a day by next week. Previously, Washington, D.C. had sent samples from six possible patients to the CDC for testing, five of whom tested negative, one of whom is still waiting for results. Delaware received one test kit from the CDC. The state clarified that 100 of the tests in the kit were used for quality control leaving about 300 tests, or by other estimates, 250. It's capable of testing about 50 patients a day due to the need to run two tests per person, according to a Division of Public Health spokesperson. Delaware has ordered more test kits from the CDC and expects that some commercial labs will be able to begin testing next week. As of Friday, the state has tested at least 10 people in Florida, as of Friday, 115 have been tested. The State Health Department spokesperson said, if there is a limit to how many tests can be run per day at these labs, we have not yet reached it. We will work with the CDC if we need additional kits or reach an overwhelming volume of tests. In the State Lab of Georgia, which began testing people this past Thursday. 